right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. Ooh, a couple of a couple of clouds in the sky. Normally I say blue sky at San Diego, but there's a few clouds today. So, And I am joined by Kathy Bowman Atkins, who is in North Carolina. How are you doing, Kathy? Doing well. How about yourself? Doing very well. And Kathy is the CEO and founder of the Latitude Group. Uh, and she, um, she helps businesses um, understand their pain points and, you know, re- and, and retool themselves. And especially now, um, given what's going on with the coronavirus, um, Kathy and her group are really helping companies understand how to retool themselves, maybe pivot, maybe tweak things a little bit, but how to get yourself set up for the post-COVID world, which is, as we know, is is not going to be 100% the same as the pre-COVID world. And in some businesses, it's going to be radically different. In some businesses, it's going to be moderately different, but it's going to be different. Right, Kathy? Absolutely. So, when you talk to um, when you talk to businesses right now, Kathy, uh, um, how do you advise them how to first of all take a look at where they are right now, and, and what are the factors that are impacting them that are you know crisis related, and which are the ones that are likely to continue to be a challenge for them, and which ones aren't, and how do they um, best position themselves to? pivot if necessary or tweak as necessary? It's a great question. Uh, What we do is right now, we are looking at breaking down the planning cycles into uh, Mm six-month modules, so to speak. And and by doing that, John, we are saying, right now, let's look at where you are financially. We're going to look at the P&L. We're going to look at any cash obligations that you have. And we're going to say, okay, for the next six months, what does it take for you to survive? What does it take for you to be standing on the other side of that? What And what changes do we need to make? What are you learning in here in terms of what you need to be offering? Because your product and service offerings might have to be different mm-hmm. than they were before this started. And you know, so those are the opportunities. And what are you learning about how you work? And things mm-hmm. because one of the things that happens, and this isn't new, we, we don't always learn from history, it repeats itself. <laughs> Not that we've ever, any of us have lived through a pandemic, but you know, when business is really good, which it was before this all hit for almost everybody, uh, people get a little complacent. Yep. They're, they're, they're not as disciplined, they don't think as creatively. All right, or, or innovatively, things are, are humming along, so it's great. So in this time, they start looking at those things again and thinking more creatively about what they can do or where they need to tighten up and be more disciplined mm-hmm. again. So those are the things that we're looking at, and we're saying, okay, over the next six months, what are the key metrics or key performance indicators that we need to be managing to? And for the most part, volume or revenue is going to be the leading indicator. It's not always the leading indicator in normal business sure. times because we're always playing that game. When do we hire the next salesperson so that mm-hmm. we're ready you know, for the next surge in the business? But now that is the leading indicator. We get this much volume so we can bring this back or we can do that. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're doing for, for right yeah. now. That's what we're looking at. And I think there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a number of ex- excellent points in there. I think the first thing is uh, obviously shrinking the window that you're looking forward into. Exactly. And as you say, the, the six months. I mean, do you remember? Like, it almost seems like nowadays it seems such a it seems such a a a kind of cute idea the you know the five year plan or even the three year plan. And even as you said, the twelve to eighteen month plan. No, it's the six month plan is what really matters. And the weeks ahead. And the second thing that you said is I totally agree with when times are good, we put up with a lot of inefficiencies and all of that because we're like, yeah, whatever, things are good. And they come back to bite you. So I think one of the first things is you have to look at how you can make your business as efficient as as possible. And obviously, you know, as you're saying, when you're working with businesses, that directly impacts your the expense side of your business, which you got to get a handle on quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. So what are some of the other so okay, so if you start to say, okay, I've I have i have a look at my business, like I've gotten I've I've figured out who I who I need to hold on to, maybe where I need to make some cuts here, or how I need to and organize myself. How do you move from 
that kind of reactive mindset because it's very easy to get caught in that and get stuck in that and just continue to be reactive but to be cautiously kind of proactive and sort of say okay i need to get ahead of this because it's going to be a dog fight when you come out with your competitors right Yes, absolutely. So, so, so what we do is that first six month chunk right now, we're calling the emergence plan. And mm-hmm. we're just talking about financial viability. The next six months, we call that the resurgence plan. It's doing exactly what you just said. We're looking at how do we get to some stability? And, and what does that look like? So we're introducing some more things other than just that financial look. We're looking mm-hmm. at internal processes again, and we're looking at the external world, okay, and competition and what has changed out there, et cetera. So we're really beginning to try to stabilize the business, okay, and, and to get into more of a forward thinking uh, mode rather than just reacting, as you just said. So that's what that's all about. Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting, so when, you know, as things start to loosen up a bit, uh, as we were saying, you're going to be immediately in a dogfight with all your with all your competitors, right? But it's not just with your comp- it's not just with your competitors. It's who you sell to your 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 prospects and your customers. They're also going to be fighting to fund your initiative within their organization. So you probably have to do a better job than ever to equip your your target buyer with the reasons why they should do something with you in the next six to twelve months, as opposed to put you off till next late next year. That's true. And one of the things that we are talking about, you know, a lot of times people, you know, when we get rid of the non-essentials in a time mm-hmm. like this, uh, you know, oftentimes we get rid of marketing if we had marketing to begin with. Sure. And, but, but you need to bring it back once you can get, you know, on some stable, stable ground so we get that financial viability because you might need to change your messaging and, mm-hmm. and, and what you're going to, to put out there. So, so that's pretty important to do that and to be ready for, because after those first two that I talked about, emergence and resurgence, then we go to what we call the next six months. And we're saying over the next 18 months, there's three six month cycles. And that's mm-hmm. what we call convergence. And we say that because I think that's where people are gonna start to get a handle on what their new reality is. Mm-hmm. And either they're gonna create it or put a stake in the ground as to what it is, or they may have some pretty good idea, but that's when we start becoming a little more strategic. Okay, and we got to have that messaging and have those things in place to be able to go to that new market or with that new product or service offering. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely. That makes complete sense to me. Uh, and I think right now, one of the things that is is challenging because we're in this, I would say we're in this kind of weird kind of gray area between we're not still in the full lockdown, but we're not still in the full yes. open up either. And it's different in different parts of the country. So people are a little confused. But when you talk about messaging and 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 all of that and and interacting with the market, there comes a point when you have to kind of move beyond the emergency messaging, right? Because I mean, we're all a little bit tired of that now in some ways, and you have to start to have a little, something a little bit more positive to communicate with your prospects. Well, I think a couple of things. You're absolutely right. You do have to have that, and you want to give people hope and to see a future and how you can help them. That has to be your message. That should have always been the message of sales. You're always trying to show people how you can help them. But it's especially important, you know, right now, excuse me, to to help people understand, you know, how you can help them. But it is important because you're right. We're in this gray area. As always, I think the the most important communication skill relative to selling is listening. Actually, Mm -hmm. all communications, quite frankly. But listening is really important because people are in different places. In yeah. terms of how they feel about this, how uh, you know how comfortable they feel with getting out there and doing certain things, so we need to be mindful and respectful of that, and, and not just barge in and you know uh, assume certain things. And, and so I think that's really important to to get a lock on that to see how we can really help them. Yeah, I think you raise an excellent point there because I do think it's a time when you really do need to understand uh, the personality of the people who you're interacting with. Because as you say, maybe the person who you're interacting with at your prospect is a is a highly cautious person. Maybe they're quite a nervous person. So you have to orient your communication that way. Maybe they're a little bit more of a go-getter and you can... Uh, uh, orient your communication that way. But I think you're correct. You have to be very, very aware and listen and really understand where they are right now. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And not just where they are as a company, but where they are as people. Yes. And right now, that's particularly important, too, because we also have another huge uh, 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 social, the social unrest, the racial injustice issue. Mm -hmm. And that people have very strong feelings about that. And they're looking for companies to make statements about that. And they want people to engage in those conversations. And that's a little bit tricky. Even mm-hmm. no matter what we we you know believe in, but we we need to be prepared for that because that's very much on people's minds. And, and, and so as we're going out there selling, we we've got to be conscious of that. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, that is another great point as well. And it's a it's a difficult one to it's a difficult one to to navigate because uh, you know you want to you want to acknowledge it, you want to be sympathetic and you want to, you know, show a level of empathy and that. But at the same time, you also want to try and keep things on some, on a somewhat of a business footing too. So it's, uh, uh, and it's not that I have the answer. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's really hard. It is hard, but you know, again, this goes back to, I know that we're repeating something, Mm -hmm. but I find that if we're listening to people, and you're letting them be heard and get their their thoughts and their feelings out there, regardless if that's about the sale or not, that's very important. Mm-hmm. People like that. People want to feel that they've been heard. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I think it, this is. I mean, we've also we've always said that trust and empathy are important. Um, you know, in sales and in, in in any interaction in life, frankly. But I think uh, trust and empathy are going to become even more. And more important, and even on the empathy side, you know, putting yourself maybe you're not able to put yourself in the shoes of somebody else, but you can certainly listen to them and get and have them explain to you how they feel and why they feel about things and learn that way. The other thing that you can do in a business like mine, Mm -hmm. uh, and and we really uh, are, are working this and believe this, is that now in the planning. You need to plan for how your company's going to respond to that and how mm-hmm. you're going to handle that and what's going to be your position and how you're going to engage or not engage and that. But that needs to be a part of your plan. That hasn't typically been a part of the planning cycle, but it needs to be now. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, I mean, these are such interesting times in terms of the challenges for for business about, I mean, things that you have to think about that perhaps you didn't th- have to think about before. And maybe that you, uh, you know, the option, you don't have maybe the luxury of the option to just stay above the fray a little bit, you know, you have to have some kind of of answer. I mean, we're, we're I mean, unfortunately with our company, we've always said that salespeople are the, are the, you know, have a peacekeeping role in society because they are the front end of trade and you can't have trade without peace, right? You can't have people right. trade. People can't don't trade if you're shooting at each other, or whatever. Generally speaking, they're not trading at that point. Um, um, so we think it's a it's it's a it's a great message. And I think also as as you talk to you know companies as well, I, I think that's a great way of of recasting things a little bit for salespeople to understand that they are they're there to bring solutions. They're there to help people. They're there to facilitate interaction between two companies to help trade. It's a it's a beautiful position to be in if you look at it. That this is a, a pivotal role, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, I've heard some of your other podcasts and some of the salespeople talking about you know how salespeople are having to pivot, and that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sales sales hasn't stopped because we're in this mm-hmm. situation. Okay, it may be transformed in some way, and I think that's a huge mistake. I mean, and I'm, you know, uh, counseling my clients. Let's not make excuses for why we can't sell right now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's let's leverage. It. There is some opportunity here, and I don't, I don't mean that to sound un, uh, sympathetic or uh, un, no. uh, em, empathetic, but that is absolutely true. And so, and I see people that are succeeding at that right now because they're making that pivot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there is, I mean, let's face it. I mean, maybe you sell into an industry that's been completely destroyed right now by the by the virus. Okay, so you have a problem, but maybe there is something adjacent to that, that you could right. sell into. Maybe there's an industry that you've never thought about selling into, but they're doing really well right now. So you can maybe reconfigure your offering for that. So uh, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think there's an excuse to just say, oh, nothing I can do. Um, nobody's buying from you, so right. I'm going to sit back. There's always something you can do, and you know, at at the very least, uh, if you are if you're 
uh, if you have contact and you bring value to the people you're interacting with, you're still exactly. building opportunities for the future. Absolutely. That planting those seeds, even though mm. that they're not paying off, they will in the future. I'm finding, I'm picking up the phone and talking to a lot of, because, you know, I've been, we've been in business a long time. We know a lot mm. of business leaders, had a lot of clients. And I'm finding that almost without fail, I'm picking up the phone and talking to them, giving them a little, you know, tip or hint or something that I heard that they might want to consider, yeah. just touching base. They appreciate it. They like it. And, and you know, I'm not doing it just to garner points for, for the future, but that will, that is happening. Yeah, and I think it's a, uh, and it's also the other thing is you know a lot of people are working remotely for the first time. A lot of people are are uh, adjusting to a virtual environment. Uh, and what what I've certainly seen myself is that it's actually in some ways it's easier to get people to talk to you because when they're in an office or when everything is going, everything is running smoothly, like, I don't have time for that. But right now, everybody feels a little bit vulnerable. And maybe some people who are working at home for the first time feel a little disconnected or, uh, you know, out of sorts a little. So they're actually quite willing to talk and they're, and they're actually welcome you calling them. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but the other thing that I do see that I would like to mention, yeah. and, now, and, and, and another pivot that we've made, since, you know, we've been in this now for, what, like two and a half months or something mm -hmm. like that. So one of the things that I'm seeing and that I am facilitating and counseling my clients about, it may sound crazy, but <laughs> because people want to support each other, they've gotten too polite. They're not mm -hmm. holding each other accountable. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. So they're letting things slide because they want to be nice and they want to support everybody. Well, you can support people, you know, nice by still, you know, doing the job and holding people accountable and telling when they're they're not, you know, measuring up or that didn't quite cut it. And so, so I, I'm seeing that that happening some, and so that's something we're going to have to clean up a little bit. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. Uh, people confuse what's 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 being nice. Um, at the end of the day, it's not nice actually to facilitate somebody not doing their job properly or not achieving because actually exactly. you cheat. You're cheating yourself, you're cheating your company, and you're cheating them at the end of the day, too, That's because right. you have to hold people accountable. But yeah, I could I could definitely see that uh, maybe there's been an overabundance of, of shall, we, shall we say, mis, misguided concept of niceness. How about Absolutely. That? Absolutely. <laughs> and so in, in the last moment, couple of moments we have here, um, what else would you would you want to highlight for people as they start to look at, you know, how do I make sure that my business comes out of this the best it can well, as you might expect, I think that no matter where you are in this cycle, mm -hmm. how big or small you are, you need a plan. Yeah. And you need a plan for a, certain, for a number of reasons. One thing is employees are feeling uh, the uncertainty surrounding these times. So if you can, number one, be communicating with them often with straight talk, you know, be mm -hmm. honest with them. But if you can also say, we have a plan. You know, this is our plan. This is what the future looks like. Yes, there are some triggers with that plan. We don't know everything with certainty, yep. but we have a plan that we can adjust from and pivot from, et cetera. So I really think that is extremely important right now that people can see that, that we're not just casting about, you know, that, that there's some plan and some forethought. Yeah, I, and I think that's I think that's so critical because that's what people look for at the end of the day. They want to know there's a plan, and yes, they understand that there are many variables and unknowns out there, and things beyond your control, and the plan may change, and right. you know, we may have to may need a new plan in a couple of months, may need to pivot again. But you know, yeah, even in normal times that happens. You know, yeah, when we're exactly. doing the longer term plans, that happens. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with you. I think it's I think it's critical that uh, that leaders lead, that they have plans, and that they communicate. Because at the end of the day, that's what most people want. They just want to they want to know there's a plan, and they just want it explained to them. And then most people are pretty good at uh, getting on with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, Kathy, this has been great. Great, um, Kathy Bowman Atkins from the Latitude Group. All of Kathy's information is going to be in our contributor bio. But before we go, Kathy, please do tell people a bit more about you and Latitude. Well, the Latitude Group was, was founded 17 years ago, and, and I like to tell people that we are an inch wide and a mile deep. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a couple of things really well, and we know what those are, uh, strategic planning and, uh, and execution of those plans. That's paramount in, our, uh, in, in what we do. We have the processes and the tools 
we help people put together a really good plan based on where they want to go. But what's really key is the change management and accountability to that plan. So, for example, if we said, uh, if you came to us and said, well, boy, I'd like to do strategic planning for sales pop, you know, being hypothetical, mm -hmm. and we worked it all out and thought that was a really great idea, we would say to you, John, you've got to commit to work with us for at least a year. Now, clearly, right. if we got into it, it wasn't working out. Nobody would hold anybody's feet to the sure. fire. But we're saying you've got to work with us for at least a year because we're going to make sure you execute this plan. Mm -hmm. and, and we have things built in to do that. So that's a big differentiator. And the other thing we do is people development. And that's a process to help execute that plan. So developing your people. And we do that. It's very long term, very hard work. It's, it's a process that, so that they make habitual changes. Okay, right. so that they get sustainable results. So, you know, in a word, we really are looking to work with and have relationships with our clients to get their results. Perfect. That's great. Well, listen, Kathy, this has been fascinating. And I know you've uh, uh, you've worked with, helped a lot of people now with, uh, you know, pivoting and getting themselves ready. I know you're going to help a lot more people. So it's been great talking to you today and great pieces of advice for anyone listening or watching. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.